Bună seara! Bună seara! Good evening, Giorga. Good evening, Lina. Hello. I think you should also turn your microphone on, Lina. Ok. Hello. Uh, suntem în, uh, în ultima seară de live-uri din această, în acest traseu de live-uri pe care l-am avut pe parcursul um, lunii decembrie, care au fost uh, live-uri parte din... Uh, din evenimentele pe care le-am organizat la editura Frontiera sub forma unui calendar de advent și în fiecare dintre cele live-uri ne-am întâlnit cu autori de la editura Frontiera ca voi publicul editurii să-i cunoașteți și să puteți să vedeți puțin din dedesubturile cărților, cum sunt ele realizate, cum au fost gândite poveștile, cum au fost gândite ilustrațiile. Pe parcursul acestor live-uri am prezentat în fiecare dintre celelalte trei serii, cărți originale de la editura Frontiera. Noi am, am accentuat de fiecare dată că ne place să credem că suntem o editură creativă și prin asta înțelegem că numărul de proiecte pe care noi le publicăm, numărul de proiecte începute de la zero cu autori români sau cu autori pe care au venit cu, la, către noi cu un text și noi am încercat să punem cap la cap un proiect editorial, numărul de proiecte de acest tip, încercăm să aibă un, o pondere semnificativă în portofoliul nostru, aproape de jumătate-jumătate față de celelalte tipuri de proiecte editoriale, proiecte în care uh, aducem cărți din, uh, din literatura internațională și le traducem și le adaptăm pieței din România. Ei bine, în seara asta, pe de altă parte, vom vorbi despre celălalt tip de proiect. Un proiect în care aducem o carte din afară, o carte pe care am identificat-o și care ne-a plăcut foarte mult și pe care o aducem în România. Cartea nu este încă publicată, deci este o surpriză și acum în jurul Crăciunului ne bucurăm foarte mult că putem să facem această surpriză. Este o carte care urmează să apară la anul, la care încă lucrăm, dar autoarele cărții au avut bunăvoința să participe participe alături de noi la un live de prezentare, un preview al acestei cărți ca să o, o, o vedeți, să știți despre ce este vorba, să vedeți această noutate. Înainte să începem să discutăm cu, cu Lina și cu Iurga despre carte, o să rog pe Ileana, să, discuția va avea loc în engleză și... Vom vorbi cu ele în engleză, nu putem să facem o traducere a acestei discuții, dar suntem destul de siguri că veți putea să ne urmăriți. Dar înainte de toate, aș vrea pe Ileana să o rog frumos să ne explice puțin decizia editorială, adică cum am, am ajuns noi la această carte, cum am găsit-o și eu o să vă arăt un pic coperta și o, o mică introducere, un mic preview legat de ediția în limba română, care este în curs de, de lucru. Uh, aș vrea să completez mai întâi ce a spus Bogdan legat de efortul creativ al editurii Frontiera. Uh, la acesta se adaugă și un efort sau o dorință a noastră de a face cunoscut publicului din România, de a face cunoscută literatura din partea este europeană. Uh, abundă pe piața editorială traducerile din engleză, franceză, italiană și așa mai departe și noi avem, bineînțeles, astfel de traduceri, dar ne străduim ca o dată sau de două ori pe an să avem uh, titluri din Polonia, din Rusia, iar, iar acum, iată, din Lituania, pentru că nu am apucat să spunem, este vorba despre un roman grafic lituanian intitulat Haiku Siberian. Și cu asta am încheiat puțin așa privirea de ansamblu, revenind la carte. Decizia de a o publica sau faptul că am ales-o pentru portofoliul nostru se leagă în primul rând de subiectul cărții. Eu am observat cartea cu ușurință, pentru că a circulat foarte mult la târgurile de carte care se fac la Bolonia și așa mai departe. A fost o carte premiată, a fost nominalizată la multe premii, deci nu era greu cumva să o observăm, dar m-a atras foarte mult subiectul ei și anume o poveste care se leagă de istoria noastră recentă. O familie deportată în Siberia și, în primul rând, copii. Cartea este spusă din punctul de vedere al copilului, care își scrie un jurnal și în felul acesta se salvează de toată experiența uh, uh, dură a exilului, a foamei uh, și a morții unor persoane apropiate. Cumva o poveste despre, despre suferință este transformată într-o poveste despre curaj. 
datorită acestei perspective a copilului care o spune. Deci acesta a fost un, pentru noi un lucru foarte important în decizia de a aduce această carte. Pe lângă subiect se adaugă, bineînțeles, faptul că este un roman grafic, adică un stil de a spune o poveste care este pe, tot mai atractiv, nu doar pentru copii, ci și pentru adulți, și ilustrațiile de excepție ale cărții. În, înainte să trecem la engleză și să discutăm cu, cu Lina și cu Iurca, am să te rog, Ileana, ca introducere la carte, să uh, prezentăm măcar personajul principal, adică să facem un scurt preview și cred că o să ne și citești, nu? Da, sigur. Aici îl vedem pe Algis, așa se numește băiețelul de 8 ani, care este luat într-o noapte pe sus, împreună cu familia și trimis în Siberia. Și o să vă citesc scurta prezentare pe care aș o face Algis la începutul cărții. Mă cheamă Algis. Am vreo 13 ani, nici eu nu mai știu exact. Am o soră mai mare, Dalia, care îi place la nebunie să tricoteze. Mie îmi place să cânt în cor și să bat la tobe. Multă vreme mama n-a spus niciun cuvânt. Apoi, după o cumplită furtună de zăpadă, și-a recăpătat glasul. Tata a murit în lagăr. Dar gânsacul meu, Martin, mi-a rămas alături. Știați că în Siberia nu cresc mere? Nici urmă de mere în Siberia. Eu nu știam. And uh, now I will switch to English, since we just introduced and uh, got to know a little bit uh, better Algis. So, uh, nice to have you, Jurga. Uh, nice to have you, Lina. Thank you so much for, for joining us in this evening and to help us understand a little bit more about uh, the story, about the uh, way this book uh, came to life. And um, I will start with you, Jurga. So, Jurga is the, the author of the book because, I, as explained uh, uh, many times, there's always two authors: the, the storyteller and the illustrator. So, Jurga is the storyteller, the, and it's uh, the story behind the book. It's basically a biographical story. It's the story. It's a story of your family. So, tell us about. Uh, tell us, please, tell us about this this uh, this story a little bit, Jurga. So hello to everybody. Um, I'm very happy and especially very happy to hear a piece of uh, the book in Romania. Romanian and it sounds so beautiful and um, and even touching so, the same the same feeling. <laughs> so about um, uh, my family story, it's actually my father's story. Uh, the little boy, the main character in the book is my father though in the reality he was younger and uh, the point was that uh, uh, he uh, my father now uh, when the book is uh, was going to be published was very worried about this uh, some years that uh, that we added to his uh, story because uh, he is so uh, you know uh, these people at this generation it, it it seemed to him that it's a lie but uh, uh, his story is like so many other kids' uh, stories at that uh, time, at that time when the, uh, the country was occupied by Soviets, uh, by, by Soviet Russia, and then uh, a, a year after, a lot of, lots of families were sent to Siberia. Uh, the men were separated from families, so mostly uh, there were like uh, um, women and uh, kids and, and, and uh, old uh, people sent there. And the men were sent to other work uh, camps, uh, and most of them didn't come from there back. So my father was actually a very little boy, and he uh, he left to Siberia with his mother and his sister, and uh, uh, the sister of his father, so Aunt Petronella, who is very important character in the book, was the real person, and. Uh, And the, as they didn't have father with them, as the father was separated mm -hmm. from the family, so the aunt uh, kind of took the role of the father. She was taking care, even if uh, herself she was uh, a sick and kind of weak per per person. So the story is that uh, my father, um, he, uh, when he came back well and uh, when he uh, when i was a kid he was telling me uh, and my brother 
some kind of stories, not like uh, telling like the real stories, but they were uh, like, uh, a little bit like tales before the sleep about this far away country and uh, with some adventures and everything, not all so sad. So, mm -hmm. uh, yes, yeah, so, uh, so we were imagining it, but not very quite uh, clearly what was it. Mm -hmm. So this is this is the story, but uh, but it's from my childhood that I brought this uh, curiosity about what happened, and uh, and I was very much interested always in uh, what happened to him when he was a child. Yes, so I had it, it, it inside me, and I wanted to tell it one day <laughs> somehow. It's it's very nice that uh, also a main character of the book is behind you. It's the the goose Martin, <laughs> and the goose has a, also plays a very important role in the book. And I was while while reading the book, I was constantly wondering because it has a very interesting perspective. Uh, it's from my from my point of view, it's not necessarily a sad book. I uh, some way compared the book, but it's not. It's a it's a very far comparison. But I compared it a little bit also to to the the movie uh, La Vita e Bella, a little bit. A of little course, bit. of course. But lots of people compare to this movie, mm -hmm. and uh, and I never deny it. I say it's one of the inspirations because the the idea is the same. The idea is the same to find the beauty and light in very difficult situations. So. So of course it's uh, yeah it's one of the big inspirations. Uh, this this film is very beautiful and uh, yeah <laughs> I, we heard and it all. I was wondering since uh, if this this perspective was something that you inherited from your father, so it was the way he was telling, or is it some something that you as an author brought uh, brought in the story? It's your your style, or you wanted to write it this way. So actually, it's uh, two things that my, my father was telling uh, some stories, but but afterwards, when I was already uh, older and uh, interested in this, he was always saying, I, I can't remember, I can't remember anymore. And my, but uh, I had my uh, grandmother's diary. Uh, I actually knew my grandmother, but at that time when I knew her, we were not talking about Siberia. And uh, and uh, when she died, well, she she, left the diary and uh, and it was very small notebook but like very um, slim notebook and uh, th this notebook inspired me to tell the uh, the story in a different way because uh, there were lots of uh, books about exile about the the situation uh, appear which appeared after the independence was proclaimed and uh, they were people were keeping to to themselves very long time and so lots of books were very hard to read like really terrible stories and uh, my grandmother's diary she wrote it after all uh, not in Siberia mm -hmm. and uh, it was very very different really written mm -hmm. it was kind of lots of about nature and very small things like attention to details and uh, kind of uh, miracles in this situation. So I was reading it, it moved it so much, so many times I was reading it I, and I thought to myself that uh, that's how I want to, to write in a different way. In, in this, uh, like paying attention, not, not, mm, not in the like very huge events, or, or, but in small situations. In mm -hmm. small details uh, and uh, and yes of course uh, they were kids so um, they had like uh, they were laughing also not uh, only crying so i wanted to show this also mm -hmm. yeah basically life, life goes on in in, uh, in every situation uh, we can be the little things make us happy in yeah anywhere we are but I was also wondering, I started somehow the other way around, but uh, I wanted to come back to your, uh, your background or to you, you writing uh, books for, for kids. How come? Uh, you are, uh, it's your first book, uh, you're a uh, uh, kid's or Tell yes. us about your background. Yes, uh, I can't say I I can't say that I I, I write for kids. Uh, I I would more say that I I like writing, mm -hmm. and uh, and I was writing uh, since I remember myself uh, a lot of letters and diaries, and then 
little notes to people and uh, and then personal books i was writing uh, to people personal books which means that i was just uh, writing a book for someone and i wrote like 20 of them like this and some books which i wrote when when people started saying people always were saying to me uh, you should write like a normal book mm -hmm. like you're always writing and uh, and uh, when I wrote kind of normal books, couple books, they were not um, published. It was difficult to publish, so I tried. And then uh, maybe fortunately, because because uh, they were really very strange and weird. So finally, it came uh, to this moment when I wrote this book, and it was my first book, and it was for kids. Though others were not really for kids, and where well, some for, for kids it's it, for me it doesn't really matter right. I, mean, I don't think this is a book for kids it's equally yeah, for, it's for adults family, and everybody I would yes. say yes, yes. but uh, and um, yeah I was I think I was very happy that it happened to be my first book because uh, it's like a little uh, card of uh, you know you you give like presentation card of yourself it's it was very successful and you know it's like my first book at the same time it's difficult because because uh, people now like they're expecting something and if no I'm I'm I'm, tra I'm translator I'm translator from French language you know and it's my uh, the studies I finished is uh, French studies and and then film and audiovisual. So I was always in film world and then translation like world. So well, an animation for this book will be wonderful. <laughs> yeah, we are preparing the animation. It's a great. serious project. Oh, great. Yeah, yeah. So uh, it will happen not so soon because it will be a huge a lot huge of work, project. right? But this is my background to to be a, as to, to say to be a writer. But then afterwards, I wrote a, 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 a little book, and then I'm I'm writing now a book, and I wrote some more books. So some has to show show up. So, but this is my first book, which kind of opened me the the way to this world. Okay, Jurga. Well, sorry, Bogdan. Go ahead. Uh, I'd like to ask Jurga, uh, the book had great success. As you said, and uh, as you, we also have noticed, um, we Romanians share a common history with Lithuania because we also had grandparents that were deported to Siberia and share common memories of this uh, recent past. But how do you explain the success of the book in Western countries that uh, did not have maybe uh, the same um, history of concentration camps and Soviet regime? Um like lots of um, uh, countries, uh, I wouldn't say all, but uh, have painful moments in the history. And, uh, and that's why they can uh, feel the other national, the other people who also experience something like that. So uh, mm -hmm. uh, other than that, I think that it's uh, also a universal story. I, I've, I'm writing even, I am thinking about not Lithuanian audience, not like Lithuanian readers, but about other people, how they would understand. Even if this book has some adaptations, uh, some something to, to be explained, but uh, the, the main story of the little boy who is deported from his country remains understandable to everybody. So that's why I think it's also, in, interesting and uh, especially nowadays very uh, um, uh, of because the story of exile and of uh, refugees uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, are from nowadays and uh, it's, it's 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 kind of the same story when you against your will you you have to leave your home mm -hmm. it's uh, this is about it actually not uh, not uh, also about the, the occupied country and all this, but but about uh, the little history and the big history, like uh, right. how to join each other. Personal history against the yes, the big background of history, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. While while preparing this uh, this uh, live and having a short uh, discussion with Lina and Jurga, we we came up. With, there's another story behind the book, that the story of the book. Because there's not also only the the story in the book, there's story of the book, 
and we are, we've been asking to this moment because, like I said, there's always two authors, and uh, then I will, uh, we were saying, okay, uh, now uh, it would be good for for the for the illustrator for Lina to tell us how she received and how uh, she when when did the text come to her and how she influenced the text. And then we realized that there's another Yurga story, the discover the discovery of Lina. So how come Lina uh, was presented this project, Yurga? <laughs> Yes, yeah, so we were uh, looking uh, for the illustrator because the text was written. We were looking with our publisher, Sigita, from the Golden Fish, so Augusto Juvis, and um, just uh, searching in the internet, actually, as from the people we knew, we, we couldn't choose somebody who can do this big uh, uh, work. So we were uh, searching like for now almost, and then she thought about like remember that that uh, one uh, artist, uh, Lithuanian artist, young artist uh, had the Japanese name, and the book already like the text was <laughs> called uh, Siberian Haiku. So so we were searching, we we couldn't know how to search because it was also Lina ha hadn't. Uh, published any book before this so but she did a lot of lots of things uh, before so we found Lina Itagaki with this Japanese name Itagaki. and, uh, and we like we found a little bit of her story I read uh, the, some articles or some interviews about uh, so she lived in Japan and everything so at once but also seeing her I, I felt like yeah she's the one <laughs> and but the, it, this was the Japanese name who brought um, her to us so we contacted her and before I was living in Spain and uh, in uh, in summer I was coming back to Lithuania and then in in September I was leaving with uh, to Spain so it was like uh, a week before before me going to Spain back again and then, and then we found her, and we wanted to meet her. And by chance, she was coming to Vilnius because she lived at the sea. And we, and we met just for a coffee, just for a coffee. And uh, and we we presented her to her the project and asked mm -hmm. her if she would like to try to uh, to 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 first to try and then to 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 draw it and and that's the the story continues in on Lina's side because I talk too much. <laughs> so Lina, Lina, do you speak Japanese a little bit? Yes. <laughs> yes, you speak. <laughs> yes, we speak. <laughs> <laughs> so should I continue? Or... Yeah, yeah, please, please tell us how how you received the project. So what was the your connection with the project and. And your background, of course, as an illustrator, mm -hmm. yes. So, after school and two years of university in Lithuania, I got a chance to go to Japan and lived there for six years. And I studied international economy and came back, came back to Lithuania to work as a manager of a Japanese company. And we were creating computer games. And all the workers in my office were from Art Academy. And looking at them drawing, I decided that I want to learn to draw. And so I started taking classes. And then after a few years, I thought I should try to take an exam to see if I can draw well enough. And I got accepted to the Art Academy. And then our office was closed and I became a student again. I was around 30 years old already. And then after graduating from the Art Academy, I was already drawing comics and illustrations, but I never got an offer to draw a real book. <laughs> so, <laughs> so this was my biggest wish, to make a real book. So when I received this offer, and they said that it will be a comic, it will be a little bit about Japan, so it was everything I thought I can do and would be interesting for me to do. So I accepted this offer and it was very good. <laughs> and um, now related to the, to the approach then, uh, because um, the, the book uh, 
while reading it, I was a little bit surprised if uh, how how you connected, if you influenced the story, because it's. I was wondering if the if the text was changed or not accordingly to to your 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 style to the things you you brought inside the book. No, actually, as Yurga was working with the movies, she wrote the text which will be in the book as a text, and the second text is a scenario what I should draw. So there mm -hmm. were like two texts. So I already know what has to be in the drawing because maybe you can see that it's not really like the pictures are not illustrating what, are, what is said in the text. Mm -hmm. The pictures are telling the additional story. So Jurga thought about it at once. So it was quite clear what they have to draw. And then mm -hmm. I was using a lot of documental photographs mm -hmm. to know how to draw it. Oh. Yeah, yes, it's terrible, I, I guess, for Illustrator to receive the text like this, but I didn't know that Lina will draw, so mm -hmm. I didn't know who will draw, so I was writing also <laughs> what to draw, it was, it's terrible, <laughs> but, but then it was, it, it, it was good, and then I said to her when she was working already, you can draw whatever you, <laughs> whatever you want. <laughs> but I think uh, we are used, to, like I, I said in the beginning while I was speaking in Romanian, that we like to say about our uh, our publishing house that we are uh, creative uh, because uh, many of our projects are not just translations uh, of uh, international books we find and we consider uh, valuable to be brought to Romania we do also many many uh, projects here in Romania with Romanian authors with Romanian illustrators I must say that um, this uh, this way of doing a book hasn't occurred yet from our experience <laughs> as, a, as a publisher. We didn't see an author coming with the whole text and um, and all the directions, all the graphical directions. Uh, but I wouldn't uh, say that uh, the illustrators we know and we we praise and work with would be so so bothered about <laughs> this. Uh, Thing. I see. I think it's a. Uh, it's um, uh, It may work. It works, and it shows that it worked nice. Yeah, well, it really nice worked for me, and I'm still using the same way of working, creating the other books. I'm asking the authors to write me a scenario what I should draw. So <laughs> it was really like a good example like how it. to. Do it. Did you have in mind from the beginning a graphic novel? Uh, well, the story. Um, can be very long because at the beginning it almost was like a movie or screenplay for a movie because I was trying to get in one um, uh, screenplay writing uh, scenario writing school in France and I had to write uh, a scenario like uh, like uh, or, or some extracts from uh, some scenes from and so I, I imagined some scenes like film like movie. Okay. But uh, but then it was uh, in the past, and then afterwards I was thinking about already about a book, uh, but not necessarily for kids. And the time was passing by, and uh, and uh, in my family, of course, only in my family people can know how many years I was uh, telling them that <laughs> I will write this book, and imagine that they. They, I think they didn't believe anymore. <laughs> they were just saying, ah, yes, yes, very good, very good. <laughs> 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 so finally, when I already had my kids, you know, many years passed by, and then I thought, oh, you know, <laughs> maybe, <I'm right. laughs> maybe it should be uh, like, a, and my kids, as a, as we were living in Spain and in Lithuania, comics is not so uh, now starting, but that at that um, time not, was not so popular. Not we didn't have comics, so my kids grew up with comics, mostly French, but translated in Spanish. So I also saw how they really like reading comics, something. So I, I tried to think about some different, uh, not like novel style, but how can I tell to kids uh, the story? Mm -hmm. So that's how I decided that it should be like a little bit like graphic novel and uh, something different.
Mm-hmm. Yeah, I remember you telling us because, uh, of course, we as a publisher labeled the book a little bit in the graphic novel category, but I, uh, I know that you don't necessarily see it this way, and I must say that the book it's, uh, it's, has an original, uh, original style, couldn't be, it's of course some, something in the direction comics and graphical novel, but uh, it's, it's a very, very not common or a very special style. Uh, Lina, I asked you yes when we prepared the the meeting to to show us something related how you developed the book, how you started. Usually, our uh, our uh, listeners are interested in seeing a little bit of technical things. How 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 you how the story develops from a visual point of view? Can you please? So maybe show us? first I can introduce how the characters were created. Mm-hmm. Okay, I will share my screen. Can you see it already? Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. So here are the photographs. And some of them, like family photos, are real. And for other characters, we, together with Yurga, searched the internet and chose the person faces, which looks like the character in the book. And then I tried to draw them. So just a minute. This is the photograph of El Gupas. Mm-hmm. And uh, the real photo, right? This is of how your father, I, Yurga, yes. 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 Ah, this is how I created the character. Mm-hmm. Yes, Alikis. So at the beginning, I draw it from a photograph, but then as you know, in comics, you have to draw them in character like hundreds of times. Mm-hmm. So I thought it would be too difficult and it will be not liked every time. So I created a very simple stylized image of Algis and that's how he appeared. Mm-hmm. This is also Jurga's family photo. The small boy is Algis. Mm-hmm. You can recognize him from his ears. <laughs> and then above him is his mother and Aunt Petronelli. Mm-hmm. Um, very small photograph of a father. And my first sketches of a father and a mother. Then I was looking for a character with a sister, Bala. She, she looks quite different from the real person, but Jurga wanted her to be like a little bit boyish style with <laughs> curly hair. So we decided she will look like that. And this is, this is evolution here. The ne is something that's been rejected. Yes. Yeah, like <laughs> I... I checked which I don't like and some drawings which I liked, which looked like a nice character. And here are some more photographs which were used to create the characters that appear in the book. So here you already can see the drawings of the main characters. So that's it about the characters. And now I can show the way I draw. Yeah, that's interesting. I like to mm-hmm. go, go ahead. I like to draw with a simple pencil on a simple A4 size paper because I can do it wherever I want. So here you can see on the left the original drawing. It's still loading. It's still loading. Ah, okay. Maybe while sharing the screen, you can tor- turn off your camera and then it's going to be easier, I think, while, while sharing. Ah, okay, let's try. Okay, and now you can explain. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So and here that- you can see the pencil drawing and then I scan the picture and add the colors on my computer because oh, it's this, faster. Mm-hmm. 
So the colorization goes on the computer and the, the left side is something drawn on, on, a, on a piece of paper. Yes. Uh, yeah, I remember this is the moment when they, when they arrived, when they arrived in the village. Yeah. So, and sorry. this is the church. This is the Christmas the Eve. Mm -hmm. The Christmas Eve we are having tomorrow. Yes. Mm -hmm. I was going to ask you how, how is Christmas celebrated in Siberia? To ask Jurga, actually. <laughs> yes. yes. Well, uh, there is one chapter about Christmas, but uh, I, the most important thing in this chapter, because which really marked me, uh, uh, that uh, my grandmother told that once she got one fish, actually, one fish, and it was like for many, many people. And so I wanted, this was like very strong uh, for me memory from Siberia, like one fish for Christmas. And uh, I, I imagine that lots of people didn't have one fish. But in this chapter in the book, uh, they even can't taste it because the dog eats it. So I just uh, wanted to, to show uh, actually as if uh, there was no fish <laughs> as if as lots of moments in the book as if they imagined it and they were happy about it you know as like the fish is very important on the table of uh, Christmas Eve here in Lithuania so so uh, yeah so this this is the the, the situation of Christmas in the book yeah um, it's for me it's like we also one of kind of the saddest moments because uh, they 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 somehow when every day they they have to work they have to survive and everything is just like they have to they have to they have to. and then they they just sit down and they realize what's really happening with them i mean it's just like this moments they take each other's hands and they realize how how rough they are the hands and the, and the, how cold they, they are and the, yeah, so, so for me, it's like a strong moment in the book of realizing mm -hmm. the situation. Hmm. Okay, so I'll show us something more. Um, I had no idea that this book in the future could be translated into other languages. So as you can see in this picture, I was writing the text at once. Everything was on the paper. So later when we had the, the French publisher bought the rights, I had to delete the text, leave the illustrations alone, and then we created a font for half of the text to make the work for other designers easier. So now I don't do this mistake anymore, hoping that my other books will someday translate <laughs> into other languages. So this is a sample of a real letter, which Jurga sent me because I had no idea how the letters looked, which were sent from Siberia. And um, this is the letter which I made. So mm -hmm. I took a real paper, a real pen, I wrote it, then I bent it so that it becomes a triangle, mm -hmm. and uh, I sit on it or do something so that it looks like a little bit grumpy, like not, not so nice, like old paper, and mm -hmm. try to create a realistic view of a letter. Mm -hmm. And um, this photo I used for creating the, this illustration, which appeared on the cover. I took the street of Siberia and the two bells standing, and I put Algukas and Veruta instead of them. And this illustration was actually made for a chapter which is called Love. It, it's a very important chapter in the book because um, it talks about the love of a homeland, the love of one person to another, and that everyone has someone to love. So we had ma many versions of a cover, at least three at the end, and we were voting which is the best, and then we decided that this the love illustration works the best. And here are some photographs that I used because I had also no idea how people dressed at those times or how the trains looked, how the luggage looked. 
this photo was used for the Christmas Eve scene. Mm -hmm. so I, I mean, you besides the the general knowledge we all of us have uh, uh, about uh, these deportations and everything we learn in school or see in movies, you didn't have any history in your family or something. You just got connected to the topic with this project. Is it so? Uh, my, my grandfather was deported to Siberia, but I mean, when I have to draw it, I can't really remember what to look to like what. Mm -hmm. So for every scene, I had to use some kind of picture to make it look more realistic. Actually, Jurga wanted the book to be more fantasy style, but I just couldn't do it. I wanted to make it as realistic as possible. Uh uh, luckily, be, but because I was imagining it more like surrealistic dream at the beginning, or more like, like the kid, like the memories of the kid, kind of like a dream or surrealistic thing. You know, if there is a train, it shouldn't be like a real train. Something. So for me, it was more like this: that the illustrations will make the book like more surrealistic because the text is kind of realistic with fantasy but when uh, Lina started drawing and they thought yeah well it's it's good it's good because actually it will be like manual like it will be like for kids it will be important that it's real it's real so so uh, I accepted it at once uh, it was just another way of seeing it and very good it's interesting that uh, from my side as a reader, not necessarily as a publisher, it, this tension, I can, now I can understand it better because there's always the uh, realistic part and uh, the Martin, the goose, for instance, or there are other characters in the, in the book that are quite surrealistic. And I was asking myself while reading how come, and I was feeling this tension, and now you, you explained that it was a game between you, or yeah, um, a, a movement between you and, you and Lina trying to find the balance. Yes, yes. Okay, okay. I was, uh, uh, I will come back also a little bit to Lina because um, I got also a te te very technical question from a friend of ours, another illustrator from, uh, from our publishing house who saw the, the book while working on it, um, our team, and he was asking about the backgrounds. That's not something necessarily, I, 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 while reading, I didn't see it, I felt it probably, the, but I didn't, uh, I didn't understand, uh, but he asked why you use so many, why is it so dirty, the book, let's call it this way. Lina. Yeah, um, I, I guess it's just from the feeling that the trip was very dirty. We were traveling in these um, wagons, which were used for animals, not for people. And then we had to walk 10 kilometers to the barracks in rain. So it was mm -hmm. also dirty again. So like, it just was the feeling which I wanted to express. And um, also, if I can add about the colors. So as at the beginning of a story, it's mostly about traveling. Uh, you can see that the backgrounds have this color of a rain, of a wagon because mm -hmm. they were kind of purple color. Then mm -hmm. when they come, arrived to Siberia, it's autumn, I guess, at the beginning. So the backgrounds are kind of yellowish. Then we mm -hmm. have a chapter, or like a part of the book, which is about winter. So I use a gray background. And when something very, very terrible is happening in the story, then it's black, black and the color of blood, the red. Actually, when drawing the blood, I was doubting if the publisher will accept it because you can't find blood in the books for children usually. But some, somehow in this book, it worked. No, nobody complained. And uh, yeah, this is it, I, what I have to show. This is the Goose Martin, yes, being shot. Mm -hmm who stays, uh, stays as a character along the whole book. It's interesting now, Ilana, I'm, uh, Lina touched uh, a subject we are also 
touching in our uh, discussions and uh, uh, also I've been uh, talking with our listeners uh, during uh, our, our other life regarding the role and if we as a publisher consider that uh, blood shouldn't be displayed in a book, what do you think about it, Elena? Uh, as you know, Bogdan, we are not afraid of uh, the dark elements in a book for children. We believe that uh, children should not be exposed only to the pink side <laughs> of stories. So as long as um, um, the painful elements, blood or suffering, or I don't know, death um, are, uh, are embedded in a story, uh, the story brings a fictional level to all of these elements. They, uh, they bec uh, become symbols. And usually in the end, the story itself uh, becomes uh, a story of courage, as in this book. It's a, a story of courage and human endurance. So uh, all these elements that may be scaring act, are actually drawn into the big river of symbols in the book. So they do not stand out as being different or strange. I imagine uh, Jurga, you didn't uh, you didn't get any any complaints or objections on other on other markets or on other publishers related to the to these kind of elements. Was it? Uh, no, but I w I was thinking about all these moments, uh, not yet illustrated, but if the if the goose is shot and you see blood, so but in the text he says, oh, it's just a red rose, and he becomes alive like a spirit. You know, I was always thinking how to solve the situation at at, uh, at once in the book. Like how how can how can I show it? So I, personally, I didn't get any complaints and any even observations. And even once I participated in a discussion with a kind of very famous uh, uh, psychologist uh, uh, here in Lithuania, and she said that in this book, everything is like, I, it was not intentionally or I, but very much thought, you know, about how to, how to tell the story to the kids. So. So we were actually discussing about this and she said that, uh, yeah, every theme can be touched, but mm -hmm. it depends how, how can you, how right. can you tell it. And the, the, the interesting point is that uh, the kids were mostly and touched by the death of the goose and of the little kitten in the book, more than about the deaths of people. They right. were like something uh, you know they transported like the death to the the, the animals and birds uh, and uh, lots of times uh, they were saying to us that the most uh, uh, touching scene or you know, moving scene was the death of the goose or you know so it was interesting to observe mm -hmm. maybe because it's very realistic because the goose is shot and the, the kitten is beaten yep. with a stick. Yes. And when the people die, you wrote it very poetically and not directly. They're just sleeping in the snow and then flowing in the river. You can see their faces. But we, you are not telling and I'm not drawing the death directly. Yes. So I guess the blood of the kitten and the goose is more influential for the kids. But for the grown-ups, of course, the most terrible scene is at the end when they all reason the snow. Well, we are, uh, when we prepare this, uh, this live session, we said we are going to be um, around half an hour, but we are closing to, to one hour. So I'm, uh, I'm, uh, I'm closing to the end of the, of the video, of the live session, but I'm, uh, I just wanted to touch one more detail, the name of the book because the Japanese and now I found out during this video more that you're that you're connected Lina is also connected in the story but at least the, the it's uh, like you said Jurka out Petronella it's a very important character and um, I don't I, I won't disclose very much from the book but she she brings in this element of Japanese is it something fictional is it something true in this side of the story how how come 
I'll try to be like to tell uh, to be short to to tell how Japanese came into this book. Like yes, okay. yes. people, they just ask me why Japanese came <laughs> to this book. So uh, I, I I'll try to say how how it happened. First of all, as I said, when I was reading my grandma's uh, diary and I was uh, touched by the way she wrote it. Uh, I was searching a word, I was thinking always that there is this feeling, this strange feeling when I'm reading it, and uh, and once I just uh, pronounced to myself haiku, you know, it's like haiku, it's like, it's short, and it's so deep, and it's uh, so touching, but at the same time not saying, it's like, uh, so I, when I found this word at once, it was for me Sibiro Haiku, it's like Siberian Haiku, so the title came as Japanese. Mm -hmm. Then, uh, you know, I was, uh, I started thinking about Japanese somehow, and I remembered the play or theater play that was telling a story about the Japanese man and Lithuanian woman in Siberia of deportees, and I was like, oh, I remember, I remember this uh, this play. So I found the story and I, I found that they were uh, war prisoners, Japanese in Siberia, in the same places before Lithuanians and then after, and then, you know, the years are different, but mm -hmm. sometime they were together. And I was, oh, I was searching where, in this place where my father was there, if they were Japanese and what time, and, and they were, you know, I found uh, in the internet. And that was so. Then I asked my father. I asked my father, "Do you remember Japanese in in Siberia?" And he said, "Like Japanese? What are you talking about? You know, I don't remember anything in Japanese, not at all." And then one day he said, "Like oh, like kid, he he became like kid, and he 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 started telling the scene which I wrote in the book. Oh, I remember the gates opening, you know, and the cars going out with the with the uh, with the bodies, and they look like the dolls and." And for me, it was so strong, you know, that he remembered this. They were, they didn't see them. They were mm -hmm. in the other, but but they were next to them. Mm -hmm. So for me, it became very obvious yes, that they have to be in the book as, as is, as it is the story of the of also the other na uh, nation, as it is mm -hmm. the story of like different nations, not only Lithuanians mm -hmm. being deported there. So that's how that's how and the the. Aunt Petronella, it became like a, a bit fictional that haiku creation and everything. But, but, uh, but so, so uh, again, uh, some fictional, some real thing. Yes, mm -hmm. mixing, mixing up. Uh, uh, before before uh, closing, I received also a question from uh, the, our uh, listeners for someone uh, on the Facebook. Uh, Ask me, I will read it directly. As a parent, though, I'm wondering, is this a book who can, who, who, we can present to the children or would it be better to let them discover in our library, library by, by themselves? I guess maybe they, they, they need to, to introdu introduce the book, mm -hmm. but, uh, but, uh, but really little children uh, a reading book uh, here in Lithuania, like really uh, small children and who are not reading themselves yet. So mothers are reading to them or like parents are reading to them. And uh, and there are like few levels of understanding of this book. But for the little kids, I guess it's very good to read with, uh, with parents, this book or with grandparents, because it's, uh, it's a family story. So it, it, it works like, uh, like even if you read it alone, lots of kids who read it alone, then there are lots of discussions with the family. Right. Why did it happen? And why, why this or why that? A lot of discussions afterwards. Yeah, it's a very good starting point for this yes, discussion between point. children and parents, yes. If a, if a kid is sensitive and you know that uh, he, he or she is sensitive, it's better to 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 go with him on this journey or her yes mm -hmm. so and we... especially if you share the history and if the family who are reading the book with the kid can see that the same happened with our grandparents and tell their right. story then it's very um, important for children when we go to schools and meet our readers, we can see how important when they see like, you know, my grandmother was in Siberia too, and she told me this and that. So it's even like double impression on them. Mm -hmm.
Great. Okay, so now uh, just to make sure everybody um, knows that this book will be available in, uh, in Romania in spring, so we are working on it, but uh, next spring will be available. Um, this year we, we hoped uh, for, uh, for having it already this year, but it didn't since everybody knows this year was very complicated. We didn't uh, get to the point to have it prepared for this year. We were also trying to have Jurga and Lina in uh, live, uh, in flesh and blood here in Romania. <laughs> But also this didn't happen this year, but we hope we are going to meet next year. So there will be two, two great things uh, to expect. The book in, uh, in, uh, in spring and then um, we'll see about the moment when we can meet live and discuss some more with our fans. Uh, until then, uh, Thank you very much, Jurga, for, for joining us in this live session. I think it's, uh, it somehow made sense to have at least this, this year to meet and to, to discuss about the book. Thank you so much, Lina, for, for joining us. And um, I will switch a little bit to Romanian to, to, tell, to tell our, uh, our listeners that vă mulțumim foarte mult că ne-ați ascultat. Acesta este ultimul live pe care l-am avut în, în perioada asta din decembrie. Sper ca la anul să mai organizăm live-uri cu autorii. Noi credem că a fost un, un lucru foarte frumos și noi ca, ca publisher, ca editor, ne-am simțit foarte bine și am aflat lucruri noi în aceste întâlniri. Mâine va fi ultima, ultima bombonică, ultima ciocolățică din adventul nostru. O veți găsi pe Facebook, pe Instagram și pe site-ul nostru. Și uh, vă dorim Crăciun fericit, așa, prin viu creau, să vă dorim și mâine, sigur, pe canalele noastre. Și uh, să petreceți nașterea Domnului cu, cu bucurie. Vă mulțumim foarte mult că ne-ați ne urmărit. Ileana, dacă vrei să spui și tu ceva? Să ne auzim cu bine și în anul care vine. Okay. Thank you, Lina. Have a Thank Merry you so Christmas. Much. Thank you, your God. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So see you. See you in Romania soon. Yes. <laughs> see you in Romania. And Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, everyone. Merry Christmas. Ciao, ciao. Ciao, ciao. ciao. Goodbye.